Greetings, this is Brother Eli with another episode of Bible Truth Revealed. Today's teaching is the second in a series entitled Misquotes in the New Testament. Misquotes in the New Testament. I will be examining Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 21. That's Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 21 to see whether I can identify another misquote in the New Testament. Acts chapter 2 starting from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? So this multitude of Jews who were in Jerusalem were born in many different parts of the world. And they're hearing these Galileans speaking in all these different languages. And that confused them. They were confounded. How is this possible? Verse 9 begins to tell us where these people were born. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia. Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So these disciples were speaking in all these different languages the wonderful works of God. Verse 12. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What mean is this? Or what is the meaning of this? Verse 13. Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Meaning, they are drunk. They are intoxicated. Verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Verse 16 is uh, where we start focusing on whether or not we are seeing a misquote in the New Testament. Verse 16 says this, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So as beautiful as this story is, we need to determine, is it factual? Is this really what the prophet Joel spoke about? Let's hear what Joel said, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. 
verse 20, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, the prophet Joel did say these words in Joel chapter 2. What we want to know is whether Joel was referring to people speaking in tongues at the Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came upon them. Or is this ripped out of context and used to support the pagan narrative? Let's turn to Joel chapter 2 so that we can examine what the prophet Joel said in its original context and determine whether or not this is indeed a misquote in the New Testament. Joel chapter 2, I will be reading verses 15 to 32. Joel chapter 2, verses 15 to 32, and I will be reading from the Septuagint only because it is the oldest and most reliable version of the scriptures that I could get my hands on. Joel chapter 2, verses 15 to 32. Sound the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, proclaim a solemn service, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the infants at the breast, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Between the porch and the altar, let the priest that minister to the Lord weep and say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them, lest they should say among the heathen, Where is their God? So the reason for the sounding of the trumpet and calling the solemn service, gathering the people, sanctifying the congregation, assembling the elders and the infants. All of this, the reason that the ministers were told to weep is because the people of the Most High God, the Israelites, were being destroyed. So the prayer of these people is God spare us. Do not give us to the heathen for them to rule over us. Or the heathen will say among themselves, where is their God? Verse 18, but the Lord was jealous of his land and spared his people. And the Lord answered and said to his people, behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied with them. And I will no longer make you a reproach among the Gentiles. So a time is coming when the Israelites will no longer be a reproach among the Gentiles. At this point in time, we are a reproach among the Gentiles. That's the reason we are called certain names and made fun of and mocked. Because we are a reproach, a laughing stock among the Gentiles. But the time is coming when that will no longer be so. The Most High says he will no longer make his people a reproach among the Gentiles. Verse 20, and I will chase away from you the northern adversary. So he's going to chase away our enemies. And I will drive him away into a dry land, and I will sink his face in the former sea, and his back parts in the latter sea. And his ill savor shall come up, and his stink shall come up, because he has wrought great things. This is a destruction of the enemies of God. Those who have enslaved his people and use us for their entertainment, treat us as a laughing stock, as a reproach. Verse 21 says, Be of good courage, O land, rejoice and be glad, for the Lord has done great things. Be of good courage, ye beasts of the plain, for the plains of the wilderness have budded, for the trees have borne their fruit, the fig tree and the vine have yielded their strength. Verse 23. 
Rejoice then and be glad, ye children of Zion, in the Lord your God, for he has given you food fully, and he will rain on you the early and the latter rain as before. This is a restoration of God's people, where the blessings of the Most High are coming upon his people because we are keeping his commandments. 24. And the floors shall be filled with corn, and the presses shall overflow with wine and oil. That has not yet happened. The majority of the Israelites are still lost in sin, lost in Christianity and Islam and every other false religion under the, <laughs> the heavens. They are not keeping God's commandments. So verse 24. And the floors shall be filled with corn, and the presses shall overflow with wine and oil. That's abundance. 25. And I will recompense you for the years which the locust and the caterpillar and the palmer worm and the canker worm have eaten, even my great army, which I sent against you. So the Most High is the one who sent plagues against the Israelites to destroy everything that we worked so hard for because we did not keep his commandments. But the day is coming where we will be recompensed for everything that we lost. Verse 26, And ye shall eat abundantly and be satisfied, and shall praise the name of the Lord your God for the things which he has wrought wonderfully with you. And my people shall not be ashamed forever. Now this word forever gives us an indication of when this is referring to. Forever means that after the Most High has restored his people and recompensed us for the things that were taken from us, we will never be ashamed again, forever. Look at the state of the Israelites today. We are a people walking with our heads hung down for the most part, ashamed of our skin color. This has not yet happened. The Most High has not yet redeemed and restored his people, but when he does it, we will not be ashamed forever. Verse 27, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and that there is none else beside me. Meaning what? No Jesus, no Buddha, no Allah. We will not worship anyone but the Most High God of Israel. And my people shall no more be ashamed forever. That reiterates what we just read before, that when he does this, the Israelites will never be ashamed again. If the Israelites are walking in shame, if the Israelites are a reproach, it means that this prophecy has not yet been fulfilled. So the day is coming when the Most High will redeem his people and will never be ashamed again. Now let's read the next verse, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward, after the Most High has redeemed his people, when we are no longer in bondage, when we'll never be ashamed again, when the blessings are following us wherever we go, this is what's going to happen. Again, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and on my servants and on my handmaids in those days will I pour out of my spirit. Verse 30, and I will show wonders in heaven and upon the earth, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord come. Afterward, which means this has not happened yet. Verse 32, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall the saved one be as the Lord has said. And they that have glad tidings preach to them whom the Lord has called. So again, we've discovered a misquote in the New Testament. According to the New Testament, which the pagans wrote, this has already happened. According to the prophet Joel, this is not going to happen until the last days when the Most High restores and regathers his people. 
And when the Israelites are fully worshipping only the Most High God, not false idols, not Jesus, not Allah, not Buddha, but the Most High God of Israel and Him alone, it's time for God's people to wake up and recognize we have been and continue to be deceived. It's time to repent, Israel. With that, I say Shalom.